Okay, welcome back to another episode of After the License, the podcast where we help new real estate agents start and build their business. Today, I'm excited because we're gonna take a little bit of a different turn. We're gonna do our first interview with the one and only Sylvia Dana. Welcome, Sylvia. Well, thank you. I like that, the one and only, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you jumping on and uh, like I said, taking the plunge with me because you're the first interview E that we've had on. And so I appreciate you being willing to let me ask you some questions. And I think really the goal for today is to kind of just uh, talk to you about your business, how you get started in real estate so that new agents listening can kind of get an idea of, you know, where things can lead them uh, and, and how to start and some of those basic common questions. So let me start off and I'm gonna read you a little bio here. It says, Sylvia Dana is an active realtor in West Michigan. She's a nationally recognized real estate technology marketing trainer and coach. She also serves as one of the 10 representatives on eXp Realty's agent advisory council. So- it sounds fancy. It is fancy. I really appreciate <laughs> you being on here, you know? <laughs> so. Maybe before we get into the real estate stuff, let's talk on the real estate technology and marketing stuff. How did you, uh, how did you get into that? What, what what was the passion there? You just saw a need and decided to jump in, or what was yeah. what happened there? I that's a great question. Well, I, I was a teacher, and uh, my when I taught, I taught journalism and digital photography, and you know, and so and and that was a long time ago. Um, and, and I've always been pretty tech savvy. In fact, you know, when we had our um, EXP con, um, con this year and it was a virtual and we had yep. that um, generationist guy that came on. Yes. Yeah. Um, he talk, I, I found it fascinating because he talked about because I'm Gen X. OK, I'm just hardcore Gen X. Um, yep. And he said that millennials you know, aren't necessarily tech savvy. They just have to use technology. They just have adapted because they have to. Whereas Gen X, we um, had technology, you know, early on with like the Apple II computers, or, you know, just yep. trying to figure stuff out with like floppy disks and like had to learn it. Um, and so Gen X is typically more comfortable with technology. And I was like, that makes so much, that explains me to myself. <laughs> So, so anyway, um, so I, and I was, so I was a teacher and, you know, I just, I started to see so many people in real estate struggle with like how to yep. use dot loop, how to send an email, just really basic things. Um, and you know, in EXP in our workplace platform where we can see everybody collaborating, people asking questions. It's just like, I, I, I'm just the type of person who saw a need and I filled it. Um, and it just kind of turned into this thing. I love that. I love that. I'm, we're very similar in that way where it's just like, hey, th this isn't being done. We need to just figure it out. And, you know, exactly. So you were a teacher. So that leads me to my next question. How did you get into real estate? What was the draw there? It was a long path, you know. So, so it was never like I graduated from high school and thought, "Ooh, I should be a realtor," you know. Um, you know, I was raised by very intellectual parents where you go to, you know, college and, <laughs> yep. you know, being an entrepreneur wasn't really a thing. You know, getting a good job with the government or getting a good job as a teacher or or a um, a dentist, perhaps. <laughs> was the way that <laughs> or marry a rich man you know any of those would be great but but <laughs> anyway so so i started you know i was a journalist first i you know was a, a news not a, not a newscast journalist but a news print journalist and then um i ended up i really wanted to join the americorps program which is sort of like a domestic peace corps Okay. Uh, in the nineties, and so I got that opportunity to do that, and so I did that for a couple of years, and that led me to being interested in teaching. So I went and got my master's degree. I already had two degrees before that, but <laughs> I went and got my master's degree, and um, and and just you know started teaching, and and I loved it. I I, I loved it, but I didn't enjoy staying in the four walls of the classroom so got much, it. Um, and so. Then through a series of events, I didn't mean to leave teaching, but through a series of events, um, I had to like move back home, back to Michigan from Boise, Idaho, to um, be with my mom because she was sick. 
And so I moved back and I left my teaching program. It was 2007. Everyone was leaving Michigan. Um, you know, no one was hiring teachers because the economy was in Michigan was really breaking at that time. It wasn't everywhere else towards the West, but in Michigan yeah. it was. And so um, I found a job in marketing and I, you know, I enjoyed it. I did like email marketing campaigns and digital um, merchandising and I, you know, I made money and I liked that. And then through a series of events, <laughs> ended up doing um, uh, communication directoring, <laughs> I call it communication directoring at a dealership, a car dealership. And through that, I started selling cars, which I never thought I'd do, but I really enjoyed that. Like I enjoyed the money because I never made that in teaching. But after several years, I'm just like, man, I can't do this forever. I don't want to be like one of these old guys limping around the dealership. You know, <laughs> somebody, had, <laughs> somebody had mentioned to me about, hey, have you ever thought of being a real estate agent? I'm like, hmm, thought about it. And three months later, I was a realtor. <laughs> You know, because, you know, once you get an idea in your head, you just do it. Or that's how I am. run with it. And then so the November 1st of 2016 is when I got my license and started in real estate full time. I quit my car sales job, showed my first house November 6th. I remember it was election night 2016. We all know that was memorable. And then and then, uh, you know, went under contract and closed my first deal on December 19th. And I just kind of started from there. I love it. I love it. So it was, it, seems, it sounds like a combination of you like the sales that you were getting from doing car sales, but then you just, exactly. you know, you kind of branched out and, and liked the real estate aspect more. Did you like the aspect of running your business and being able to do the digital marketing stuff too that you liked before? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you the truth. When I was in high school, I was on the school newspaper, you know, and we had our little um, Mac classics that we used. Like that was in 19, like 88. Um, and, and I did like the page design using like page maker 2.0 or whatever. <laughs> and, um, and so, and I just had a great time um, in that environment and thought, you know, if I could be in a, on a school newspaper for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. And I think that's what led me to teaching journalism, <laughs> you know, which I was never the plan. It just happened. Um, uh, you know, I just, I, things just merged together. And, I, I, you know, <laughs> I wish I could say I had this long term, like, you know, 20 year plan for my life and, and I'm fulfilling it. But it, I've just kind of like taken these different paths. I, I mean, I think that's a, how a lot of real estate agents end up. They just come with a variety of backgrounds, a yep. variety of paths. They never planned to be here, but once they get here, many of us just stay and and just want to and, and just want to, you know, die selling real estate. So that's that's going to be me. <laughs> well, that's you know, I, I I love it. I think it's great, and it's good to hear kind of different people's path to getting their real estate license. And as you mentioned it, there's not a lot of people who wake up and just when they're a kid say, you know what, I wanna sell real estate, right? Unless their parents right. did it or was in the family or something along right. those lines. And so we all end up seeing something we like about the profession and then kind of diving in. And so I'm sure there's a lot of people that kind of relate relate to your story there. So I appreciate you sharing it. So that first year in real estate, what did you do to kind of get your business going? Like, was there something in particular that you jumped on, like whether it was digital marketing or did you just, was it connections you had through car sales that kind of helped yeah. you out when you first started? Yeah, that did help me. So, you know, I, w when I sold cars, I took it really um, personally. Like I, I, I made it my own thing. You know, even though I worked at a dealership and I had sales managers and I had a boss and there was the dealership owner, you know, I really enjoyed it because it was 100% commission. So I was driven. So um, I had learned to be driven there really because a lot of people, you know, were had been at the dealership a long time. They had already had like a clientele and they didn't have to work so hard to get as many units sold every month. And I started in car sales, like super poor, like, um, just really <laughs> like in, in dire straits, honestly. So like I would show up to this, the, the lot on Sundays when no one was there and like hand out my business card. And that's how, and then people would come in during the week and, and they'd want to work with me, you know, cause I was yeah. there on Sunday. 
So I just, you know, so I had a lot of relationships. A lot of my um, Facebook friends um, were people I sold cars to, you know, because I friended them yep. on Facebook. And so, uh, you know, I, I announced on Facebook that I was now in real estate and, um, and that was on November 1st when I got my license and I quit my job like on October 31st. And, you know, one of my car clients, who was a very difficult client, honestly, she was a very difficult yep. car client. Um, she called me and said, you know, I just fired my real estate agent and I want you to show me this house like right now. And I was like, OK, drop everything, go. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and and so that's really how it started. And a lot of my first clients were people that I knew, people I'd sold cars to, friends of family members um, when I started. Um, and that that's just, that's really how I started is my sphere. People had, who had done sort of some sort of business with me before or who knew me um, through, through friends or family and wanted to give me a chance and felt like they could trust me because they knew who I was. And that's how it really started. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing anything right now in your business to kind of continually stay in front of those people? I mean, when yeah. I talk to new agents, it's one thing I always tell them is get a list of people that know you already, whether it's yeah. when I started in real estate, I, I got my license at 18. So the people that knew me were like my aunts and uncles, but right. I put them on a list and I sent them postcards every two weeks just because, you know? And mm -hmm. so do you stay in front of those people? Is, is there something strategic you do to kind of continue to, to be in front of those folks? So I have two things to say about that. Um, I think with my family members, especially, I sort of took it for granted. And I think a lot of us do that. Oh, you know, Uncle Jim knows I'm a real estate agent. Of course, if he ever needed to sell or buy, he'd talk to me. Well, you know what? You know, you know, I mean, I might be <laughs> in my late 40s or whatever, but to him, I'm still his little tiny niece. Yeah. And 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 and, you know, I didn't really service him as a as a potential client and and that's so funny and th th that leads me to my second thing i want to say is that you know i do a lot of lead generation training because i talk about about digital marketing and using your crm and your website to generate leads right and so i have this standing joke with the, the agents i train and i say i know that you want to get free online leads but i just have to ask you do you deserve them and <laughs> and, and they were well, what do you mean i'm like well how many contacts do you have in your phone do you have friends and family members in your phone? Have you called all of them and asked yeah. them if they needed anything? Or do they know you're really an active real estate agent and not this is not just a habit? Are they, you know, getting a market evaluation for their home every month from your CRM? Um, you know, <laughs> are yeah. they hearing from you in, with a, a market update newsletter from your, you know, email campaigns? Are they, are you getting in front of them? And so do you deserve new fresh leads of strangers? when you can't even service your sphere because, you know, because I, and I say that because I learned, I've learned my lesson. I love that. I don't know, does I that help that. you? 100%. <laughs> no, that's great. And I think that's the lesson, right? I think we've all, as folks who've been in the business, we've all learned that lesson, right? It's it's mm -hmm. the, the toughest blow is when your friend from, you know, 10 years ago uses someone else, even though they know you're in real estate, right? Or your uncle Jim or whatever it is. And uh, so, so <laughs> staying in front. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so are you mostly using uh, online kind of emails and property alerts yep. to stay in front of those folks? Is that kind of the biggest thing for you right so, now? Oh, you know, I, I'm, tr I'm, yeah, I, I do. I do. I would say, let, I'm going to call it four things off the top of my head. Okay. And one, and I'm trying to get better at this, but right. instead of social media, instead of just posting like this property or, you know, showing people like, you know, doing a walkthrough video on my, you know, on my social media, um, of, of homes, um, I'm trying to do private messages, you know, five or 10 a day two people that I know where I'm just Facebook friends, maybe I barely know them and just check on them. You know, Hey, I noticed this, that you posted, you know, congratulations, or, you know, I noticed it was your birthday yesterday. I missed it, but I wanted to send you happy birthday or just private messages to, to stay in relationship. And when you do those kinds of things on social media, then they're more likely to see, you know, your posts anyway. So, so that's just one simple thing. And one, one other thing I teach <laughs> my, you know, agents that I talk to is, you know, like it or not, your sphere 
is on Facebook. That's mm -hmm. like, that's where they hang out. And they don't just want to see you post, you know, stuff and or maybe they enjoy your seeing your post, but they'd also like you to comment on their stuff or say hello to them or send them a message. So that's one thing that I'm trying to do better that I have been lacking on the last couple of years. So it's been, I've been in real estate now for four years. Okay. So that's an area I'm trying to get better at personally, besides just posting, you know, yeah. and, then, and then my, my periodic or regular um, email, I'm trying to do twice a month. Um, just an email that maybe has a video message and like a, a blog post article and a featured listing and, oh, here's, you know, reduced properties in these three counties or whatever, just to send to keep in front of everybody in my database, not only my sphere, but my new leads. Um, and so your then, internet leads get that as well. My internet leads get that as well. And then the, the third thing is um, at all of my seller leads that I get, they get a mailing because at least I have an address at least. Yep. And so they get some sort of mailing. Um, and so those are the three areas. And then the fourth is actually getting on the phone. So twice a week, at least I try to set aside at least one hour. It's not enough, honestly, that's very little, but, <laughs> but, but one hour, at least two times a week where I just really dial and call people personally, um, that have been looking at properties or shown some interest so I can make sure they know I, I've noticed them. So, you know, I have to think about myself as a consumer, you know, so like I have my insurance guy, you know, for my like car insurance, but he never checks in with me. Um, yeah. And if I try to like, you know, call the office and ask a question or need to like add a new car, I very little, I very uh, rarely get to talk to him. I got to talk to like, whoever answers the phone and, oh, I'm going to see like their assistants or whatever. And I'm going to take care of you and do that. But you know, it, because of that, cause I just never hear from him and I don't have any personal um, help from him or service. I would say if somebody else reached out to me and wanted to offer something and seemed like they were going to do that extra step of being in touch with me, I'd easily switch and probably pay more, <laughs> you know? <honestly. laughs> so, yeah. So you touch on a lot of great things there. So I, first off, I love the kind of thinking like a consumer, right? I think mm -hmm. too often we watch a training or and and or we think about, hey, we've got to do this, right? But they don't. We don't take a step back and say, okay, if I'm the consumer, if I'm going to do a Facebook ad, what am I looking for in a Facebook ad or in a post? Right. Or and, and I love what you said about kind of Facebook is an underutilized thing is just messaging people, you know, most likely if they're connected to you on Facebook, you can reach out with a message. It doesn't have to be salesy. It can just be, Hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, most likely, you know, them and it's from a past job or a kid at school or whatever it is. And you can kind of reach out and just kind of build that connection and stay in relationship with them. So I think that's mm -hmm. kind of fantastic. And then you, you mentioned your weekly email. Uh, do, you, do you use anything particular for that? Like, do you use MailChimp or using KV Core through EXP? So good question. So, you know, in KV Core, you can create like a, a an email template. Um, yep. you, you know, you, you can create it as pretty as you want, and it's really fantastic. Actually, it works a lot like MailChimp. Um, and and so I do send periodically from there, um, especially if I have like a new listing, um, or or uh, you know a holiday email, I do it from there. But okay. my my regular email that I send to keep in touch with my whole database, I do through Constant Contact only okay. because only because not because like it's you know looks any better or anything, but because you know a um, a mail delivery system like Mailchimp or Constant Contact, their job is actually to deliver mail, like email, yeah. like that's what they focus on. And so I, I can feel like I can rely a little bit more on deliverability, uh, you know, and I can just really dig into like all the analytics of who's opening, what they clicked on a lot better than I can in KB Core. So in KB Core, when I'm just sending like just listed or, you know, happy holidays, I don't care who opened it, <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. but, but, um, you know, when it comes to my weekly email that I'm you know, spend a lot of time to produce. I, I, I'm more interested in, you know, if I see somebody like I haven't heard from in a while or hasn't visited my website in a while and I can see that they clicked on something, I'm like, ooh, 
I'm gonna call him. Hey, yeah. how are you? You know, did you get my email? <laughs> you know, and maybe spark something. So that's the reasoning. I, I love that. And so the other uh, argument I've heard for that is someone who's getting your newsletter, they might wanna unsubscribe from your newsletter. Yeah but you don't want them unsubscribing from, maybe they're Search looking alerts. at the property alerts, exactly. right? The, or uh, yeah. the market reports, whatever that looks like. They might not realize they're unsubscribing from it all from if they all hit that. that unsubscribe button. And a lot exactly. of those companies, whether it's KV Core or Sync or Chime, when they get that unsubscribe button pushed, they've got to just unsubscribe them so they yeah. don't get in trouble. So right. having a separate system, I think is is huge. So that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Then, yeah, exactly. So, so the question I've gotten from new agents in terms of like postcards and mailing. So those are people that you've sold properties to already. Do you ever look up people you know, like in tax records and send them stuff? Or is it only people that you actually have listed and sold their home? Does that make sense? No, yeah. Uh, no, anybody in my sphere that I have an address for. You they send them something. Get, they get the, um, I add them to get the, their home valuation market report from KB Core once a month. Okay. And, and, um, so they get that through email. And at least once a year, I kind of wish it was more, but it's what I can do. <laughs> at least once a year, they get a, I create an RPR, I go into RPR and create a, your home value estimate property flyer in Realtors Property Resource. Now, you know, for those of you who, who, if you're in Canada, there is a, something like it, and I can't remember the name of it, but but in the United States, we have RPR that's provided through the National Association of Realtors. Um, and so you can create these great flyers. So, you know, you can put any headline you want. Like I saw one guy, he watched one of my trainings and he did what I did and he's put it his headline, your home could sell for, and then he put the, the estimated amount. Um, you know, but I just put like your estimated home value and I write them a little message and, you know, I even give them like a, you know, a call capture code in there that I use through KB Core or schedule a time to meet with me real easy link that they can just see on this printed paper and I mail it to them and people like getting mail. The other thing I do is, is I actually write by hand. Now I have an assistant do it now. I don't have to do it anymore because I make <laughs> the money now where <laughs> I make enough money now where I can hire somebody to actually write the addresses for me. But the reason I do that and don't just print labels is because when somebody gets something in the mail, like a pretty envelope that's a bright color with actual writing on it, that's not like send out card writing or <laughs> actual writing, yep. they're more likely to open it. Um, you know, so anyway, they're going to open it up and see your face and see your information and see their house and how much it's worth. And whether you know them or don't know them, they like getting that stuff. And you're more likely to get listings. I've converted listings that way from people I know and people I don't know. Yeah, I 100% I what... agree. When I was a new agent, I one of the first things I did is I made my list of people I knew and I uh -huh. wrote them all handwritten notes, right? And hey, yeah. It's Jeff, I got my real estate license, I'm sitting at an open house, you know? If you mm -hmm. need anything, let me know, and you drop your business card in there. And, you know, no one ends up calling you from that handwritten note, but they remember it a year later, or, you know, true. 18 months later when they get all your other stuff too. And then they go, mm -hmm. hey, you've been sending me stuff. I wanna, you know, I've got a house to buy and, and it ends up working out, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. the handwritten stuff can go a really long way. It really was, can. You can't unsubscribe from mail. I've tried. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, you know, when I, I kind of learned the selling cars, I um, mean, you know, because I was like, okay, I've got all these, you know, people I've sold cars to because, you know, you sell, when you sell like 17 cars a month it, and you do it for like three years in a row or whatever, it adds up to a lot of people. And then a lot of people that you met that maybe didn't buy from you, but they were just thinking about it or or they're yep. still in your CRM, you know, they're still in your system. Um, you know, they don't mind hearing from me because they, they're, you know, sell, people buy cars a lot. Like people like to really buy cars. <laughs> and so, so, so anyway, so um, I had decided, you know, I took like notebook paper and I'm going to do this again for real estate because it works fabulous. But I took like, you know, a legal pad of notebook paper and I wrote like a, a, a like an update letter about everything with you know sh the Chevy brand and GM and discounts and different neat things that are going and I put some personal stuff in it like you know hey you know my son just turned 21 and what's great about that is he can go to the store for me to get wine you know and, and just like yeah. I integrated some personal stuff and I got you know and and so I wasn't a handwritten letter 
it was one handwritten letter that I made copies of <laughs> and I stuck in envelopes um, and, and people um, opened them and I got so much great feedback from that. But anyway, I'm going to do that again. That's a great idea. And, mm -hmm. and, and I like the making a copy of it versus, I mean, the easy thing is there's a lot of printers now that kind of do the handwritten, Oh right, right. but I, I think it looks I haven't seen one that like looks fantastic, that it looks like actually handwritten, right? So if you right. can do one letter Just handwritten, one. make some copies, you can fill out the, the two name, you know, Dear Susie and exactly. drop them in. And That's I did it. do that. Like I, on every one, I did write like a personal note, like like something like, you know, hey Susie it was it, you know I haven't seen you guys in a long time when are you going to stop in for an oil change again and just leave it like that and then that way I wrote so little and so my hands didn't hurt me you know and I just did a few a day um yeah um, and and uh I you know for real estate I've done similar things not that particular idea just with regular like cards in the mail but um but you know, I was thinking about this notebook idea because it worked so well when I sold cars. I'm like, I just need to do that again. So just through you, talking to you, I was reminded I got to do that. That is great. That is great. So I, I've taken up so much of your time already. So maybe one more thing if you still have time, but it, it, any, any tips or tricks or any, like if you were a new agent again, like what would you, is there a piece of advice you would give yourself or a routine or anything to kind of get you going? So, you know, I guess um, one important thing I want to say is that, you know, when you become a real estate agent, you have to understand that there's so much training available and you can get it anywhere. You can YouTube it. You can, you can, you know, find a blog post about it. You can sign up for webinars in our EXP world. You can go to any training you want any time of day or night. I mean, it's like a nonstop. So there's so much training and resource available. So there's no lack of somebody wanting to teach you. Yep. But, but nobody in this business, for you to be successful, nobody's going to hold your hand to do it. Like it's, it, unless maybe if you joined a team, you know, yeah. and we're like a buyer's agent, maybe, maybe. But you pretty much have to just figure everything out. You have to be willing to figure it out and and do it and realize it's completely up to you. Yeah. And you know, I was at actually in a training myself this morning, um, with Jackie Bowman, who's a great business coach. And um, she's also on the XP agent advisory council. And she was like a team leader for Keller Williams in the past, but did a, a workshop with her. And she was saying, you know, 12% of new agents um, are, are, are left is still in this business after they get their license. You know, so we always have this influx of new agents and some stay, but a lot go. And it just, you know, and it, and the reason is most likely is because their expectation is that somebody is going to treat them like an employee and yep. tell them what to do and, and, and track them doing it and that that's not how it works. And so that's just. If, if that's where your expectation is, either get out of the business or change your expectation. <laughs> so yeah. I guess that would be, you know, um, a big piece of advice. Um, but also, you know, the second is find your tribe and find your people because what's great about this business is you're in business for yourself, um, but you don't have to be in business by yourself. So find your people, find the people you like to collaborate with and, and talk to and bounce ideas off of and, uh, you, you know, and it, but you have to take time to do that. You, ha you yeah. have to take time to do it. So there, that's all I have to say about that, I think. No, I think that's fantastic. And I think a big thing for people is, you know, finding your tribe, that can look like a lot of different things. There's Facebook groups out there, um, new real estate agent groups. Um, I've been doing like a mastermind over Zoom on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, agents chit-chatting about marketing. I've put together like coffee clubs now. You know, you could do a Zoom Zoom coffee, coffee club. Yeah, drink coffee. And, I drink a whole pot of coffee now every day because I'm <laughs> sitting in Zoom meetings drinking coffee. Exactly, exactly. But you can just kind of create your own tribe is figure out who you want to work with and, you know, people that are going through similar stuff as you and just you all just have to figure it out. You know, and that's a big thing. I like that is at the end of the day, no one's going to kind of be a part of your rescue. You have to be a part of your own rescue and you've got right. to just figure it out and, and run with it and you're going to make some mistakes and you're going to spend money on things that you 
shouldn't have spent money on or waste yeah. your time on something. And it's just part of the business, you know? And Right. That's the other thing that um, we were talking about this morning, this other workshop I was in, um, you know, I always, you know, we talk about is it's, it can be a gamble, you yeah. know, um, it can be a gamble when you're investing in money in certain things. Um, and you learn lessons, but, but you know, what's, what's not a gamble is your own effort and what you decide you're going to do. You know, that's yeah. not a gamble. That's a decision. So there you go. Yeah. It, it, real estate's this weird thing is if you just get up every day and you try and meet people and you try and talk real estate and you do real estate related activities, eventually things just work out. It might take a couple months, it might mm -hmm. take a couple weeks, but you know, you have to get out there and you have to start, you have to weirdly start working before you start working, but it ends up, yes. uh, it ends up kind of figuring itself out, you because know? Because you're, you're telling the universe that this is what you do now and this is what you're prepared for and this is what you're doing. And so the universe, you know, kind of falls in line. But if all yep. you're doing is preparing, preparing, preparing all the time, but you're not willing to actually take any action, you're telling, you're telling the universe you're not ready to do anything yet. You just want to just set up everything up <laughs> you know, so you have, to, yes. you have to actually take yes. action and just take the risk and take the jump i Absolutely. love that i love that i uh i think that's a great place to stop so thank you so much sylvia uh i know you have a ton of classes a ton of trainings anything you want to promote drive traffic to new agents classes coaching sessions what do you what do you have going on okay okay all right so on mondays at 5 p.m eastern I do a KB Core happy hour, and it's happy hour because if I say KB Core, um, you're allowed to drink. And I don't care if it's water or coffee or a cocktail, but this is, we have to make it fun. It's it's how I now look forward to it <laughs> because I do yes. it for free. And I'm like, oh, why am I doing this? And I'm like, oh, no, it's happy hour. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but anyway, so I always teach like a KB Core topic or related topic. You know, so yesterday um, I didn't teach anything directly related to KB Core. I taught um, the top five free marketing strategies for realtors, but it all ties into your online presence and, and getting free leads online, which people want to do with KB Core. So, but mostly it's about actually using the KB Core product. Um, and then um, on Tuesdays at 930 Eastern time, I do a prospecting power hour where people join me at 930. We share with each other like who we're gonna call you know is it fizbos is it other agents is it just people in your sphere new leads who is it and then um we mute each other out but we can still see each other and then we dial for one hour and then we come back in and say who is it you know how did we do how many dials did we make i love what that businesses did we have and um and then uh, i do do a kb course setup service i have a team now who helps me um, and, and so I provide that along with on demand and live coaching. And then finally I'm starting, I used to do a book club. I don't know if you guys, you remember that I used to do a book club, um, in, in on zoom and I'm starting that again in January. So it's like one, one book a month. Oh, Siri's telling me things. Okay. So that's what I got going. Fantastic. Is there a link or a site we can uh, tell people to go if they want to check in on your coaching and your live and yes. paid? I'm gonna, um, I'm going to put it in the, you want me to put it in the chat in here? Or Fantastic. And I'll, and I'll make sure it's in the, uh, yes, I'll make sure it's in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast and also make sure it's in the Perfect. YouTube description as well. So Sylvia, thank you so much for doing this with me. I appreciate you being the first guest. You were fantastic and you shared Absolutely. a lot of thanks. great knowledge. We'll have to have you on again. Thanks for having me. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thanks for having me. There's the link in the chat and um, hope you have a great night. Thank you. You too, Sylvia. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. bye.